Hello everybody, greetings from Ireland. Yesterday we heard about some of the fantastic research being carried out at synchrotron hosted soft x-ray microscopes. Today I would like to talk about progress in the development of a commercial laboratory scale soft x-ray microscope here at Sirius XT. Sirius XT is a Dublin based company. We spun out of the University College Dublin School of Physics in 2015. We have developed and patented a miniature soft x-ray light source that is sufficiently bright, robust and scalable to enable the production of a high throughput benchtop soft x-ray microscope for whole cell imaging. Our goal is to provide a commercial solution that is comparable in performance to that of the synchrotron hosted soft x-ray microscopes. This will allow scientists to image biological samples in their own labs on demand. So cryo soft x-ray tomography, it fills the uh, resolution and field of view gap between light and electron-based techniques. Uh, this makes it ideally suited to the imaging of whole cells and organelles. It can also be correlated with fluorescence microscopy and electron tomography to investigate intricate molecular interactions within whole cells. This allows the study of biological processes across a broad range of length scales and complexities. The development of SXT imaging capabilities has been driven by research groups to date, widening its use across life science. The technique uses soft x-rays within the so-called water window region of the electromagnetic spectrum, a region between the K absorption edges of carbon and oxygen. Here the x-rays are differentially absorbed by carbon mo uh, molecules, whilst having an attenuation length of 10 microns in water at a beam energy of 500 electron volts. This makes them ideally suited to the imaging of whole cells up to 10 to 15 microns in diameter. The contrast is entirely natural. Contrast is also quantifiable and can be used to segment organelles in soft x-ray tomograms. The uh, samples are fully hydrated and the only preparation is simply cryo fixing and resolutions uh, in 3D of better than 50 nanometers uh, are routinely achieved at synchrotron hosted systems. On the right here we see a couple of images from and two of those synchrotron microscopes. Here we have a 3D volume rendered reconstruction of a dividing yeast cell from the uh, soft X-ray microscope at the NCXT group of Professor Karen Larable at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. And on the right here is a, an ortho slice through a reconstructed adenocarcinoma cell uh, examined at the HZB uh, in Berlin. The SXT niche was nicely um, summarized by Liz Duke of the Diamond Microscope in a paper from a number of years ago. She describes complex 3D structures in whole cells, volatile structures that are difficult to capture with chemical fixatives, samples where accurate volumetric measurements are important, as well as samples in which compositional information is relevant. Now moving to describe our microscope in some detail. On the left here is a top view drawing of a system and on the right is a photograph of the microscope um, as it exists in the Series XT lab. And you can see the footprint is approximately three meters by two meters and some of the main compartments of the microscope are the optical breadboard which houses the drive laser, the soft x-ray source chamber, the microscope chamber, the cryo sample cube, as well as the camera rail. Everything here, apart from the optical breadboard, everything is under vacuum. Uh, the microscope is modular for ease of assembly and serviceability. Taking a slightly closer look at the modular uh, view, the source is laser driven. We have a laser uh, and laser conditioning optics uh, delivering the laser beam into the vacuum source chamber. Within the source chamber, we have the laser focusing lens, the target, the interaction of the laser with the target produces a plasma that uh, emits broadband soft x-rays. These x-rays are collected by a grazing incidence collector optic and delivered downstream towards the microscope chamber. Within the IF arm, we have the second focus of the collector optic, uh, and this serves as a very useful beam diagnostic location. Within the microscope chamber, we have the multi-layer mirror. This selects a narrow bandwidth for uh, imaging. The condenser optic is a grazing incident uh, ellipsoidal optic also. It's in a matched to the collector. Within the cryo cube, we have the sample to be imaged as well as the objective zone plate. Typically, we use objective zone plates that are in a match to the condenser. And completing the microscope modules is a variable magnification camera rail 
which houses a standard back illuminated CCD camera for data collection. So taking a closer look at the plasma source technology, the source is generated by focusing a 25 millijoule, seven nanosecond pulse from a standard industrial machining laser onto a molybdenum disc. The disc is rotating and rastering. This allows the laser pulse to strike a fresh area of the target each time. Of course, laser plasma sources produce copious amounts of debris and Series XT's poor IP lies in the protection of nearby optics uh, from this debris. For example, here we have a special lens window that protects the laser beam focusing lens and the soft X-ray collector optic is also immune from plasma debris damage. This allows us to employ relatively high in a laser focusing optics as well as soft X-ray collection optics to make a, an efficient light source. Uh, we routinely place a CCD camera at the second focus of the collector optic to measure beam stability and stability values of better than 10% uh, are routinely achieved. So source diagnostics, of course, it's very important to use multiple source diagnostics to continuously monitor the source output during operation. The monochrometer uh, measures the source spectrum. Here uh, is shown um, between two and nine nanometers within the encircled region. You can see quite uh, prominent peaks uh, that lie within the water window. We monitor the laser focus uh, spot size continually, which is a value of uh, 10 by 13 microns. We use a, a pinhole camera to image the soft X-ray emitting region of the plasma, which has a size of approximately 12 microns, which means we can efficiently couple it through um, our microscope. And as I mentioned already, um, a CCD camera is routinely placed at the collector focus to monitor the output from the source chamber. We have also measured the reflectivity of the collector optic and found it to be in excellent agreement with the CXRO data. We have measured the source output over a continuous period of 50 hours. We measured the source uh, size, the spatial and intensity stability, and we found the stability to be excellent uh, over this time duration. This is an excellent achievement given the laser beam intensities implied as well as a number of moving components inside the vacuum chamber. Multiple laser passes are possible until the target needs um, replacing. This happens uh, after a period of about 50 to 80 hours where the, where the stability gradually diminishes. This is due to increased cratering of the, of the target disk uh, surface after multiple passes as seen here um, in this optical profilometry data. Upon replacement of the target disk, the stability values return to their original and target disc replacement is, is very quick and easy due to the modular design of the microscope. Now sample plane illumination um, the um, broadband source spectrum needs to be narrowed of course and for this we use um, a chromium titanium multi-layer mirrors that have a peak reflectivity at 2.73 nanometers. This corresponds nicely with one of the prominent peaks um, in our source spectrum. The reflectivity of the multi-layer mirror is approximately 20% and it has a band pass of about 340. It's also worth noting that other multi-layer mirrors uh, ca can be implied to reflect uh, efficiently within the uh, water window region such as chromium vanadium which reflects at 2.42 nanometers. This would allow the, the use of multiple multi-layer mirrors on a turret um, to allow the use of spectrally separated probes to increase the, the protein labeling capabilities of our microscope. So this could be a nice feature that uh, we could add in, in the future. The far field profile after the sample plane is ring-like. This is due to the grazing incidence optics implied in the microscope. You can see part of the ring is missing and this is due to the debris mitigation scheme implied at the source. The sample illumination spot size is measured to be 20 by 25 microns uh, with a photon flux into the sample plane of about 5 by 10 to the 8 photons per second. Looking at the condenser depth of focus, uh, here are true focus plots of the condenser focus. The um, blue rings enclose one over e squared diameter of the focus spot size. And plotting the beam radius as a function of the camera position, we describe the condenser depth of focus. Here we show 
the zone plate here is um, depicted by the orange line, uh, placed at its focal length from the minimum beam waste. Nominally, the zone plate is in a matching the condenser, but you can see here in reality, we seem to have some slight overfilling of the zone plate. Part of the ongoing optimization process is to achieve optimum coupling of the illumination into the zone plate numerical aperture. For zone plates, uh, we currently use three distinct zone plates mounted on a single chip. Uh, we generally use the middle zone plate here, which is the one that matches the condenser in A. The other two zone plates allow us to look at the effect of changing certain uh, zone plate parameters, such as the number of zones, DNA, etc. The zone plates are nickel based and are mounted on uh, 50 nanometers of silicon nitride uh, membrane. The theoretical efficiency of the zone plates are approximately 16% of our beam energy. This is compared to 9% uh, for tungsten. We also use tungsten zone plates um, for imaging and we have measured uh, approximately a factor of two um, better efficiency from the nickel based zone plates. So this seems to, to bear out the theoretical predictions. This is the first order image of the sample plane uh, with no sample present taken at a magnification of 300. Um, these images demonstrate both a, a spatial and intensity stability of better than 10% at the sample plane. The coordinates here are sample plane coordinates. Uh, extrapolating to a magnification of 800, we arrive at a photon flux of 16 photons per pixel per second at the image plane. Based on our basic calculations, this should equate approximately to a three-hour tomogram, assuming a five micron thick biological specimen and 111 projection images. The source is currently operating at a repetition rate of one kilohertz, and we are moving towards increasing this to two and three kilohertz over the coming months, which will scale the imaging times linearly. The first images uh, uh, of of test objects um, at room temperature. We chose a, a series of horizontal vertical lines with a half pitch of 60 nanometers. These images were taken at optimum focus uh, with an exposure time of 180 seconds. Both horizontal and vertical lines were resolvable at a contrast level of 30%. We've recently started to characterize the modulation transfer function of the microscope. Uh, we use a Siemens star and acquire images using 30 second exposures. We analyze different segments and plot the contrast as a function of spatial frequency. Here for two different uh, segments, we can see we have two slightly different curves. This seems to indicate some kind of astigmatism in the system, but we're working on, on understanding the, uh, the source of that. On the right hand side here is similar, similar information plotted in a slightly different way. This is a contrast map of the two segments along the horizontal axis. We have the zone plate Z position and on the, uh, the vertical axis, we have the feature size. The optimum contrast is obtained at different zone plate positions for each segment. So we are currently extending these measurements to fully characterize the 3D point spread function of the microscope, as well as the modulation transfer function at the best uh, focusing plane. And in parallel, we are currently developing a full theoretical model of the 3D PSF uh, and MPF of the system by taking our specific illumination uh, conditions into account. For first images of biologically relevant samples, we chose a diatom. These are 3D structures, mainly consisting of silicon dioxide with features on the nano to micrometer scale. These have good contrast while still being uh, transparent, which makes them suitable test samples for high resolution uh, tomography without need for prior preservation. So here we chose a thin uh, hollow diatom with dimensions of approximately eight by four microns. Uh, from our measurements of X-ray absorption, we calculate the thickness of the diatom shell to range from 40 to 200 nanometers. The diatoms are cleaned using a, a bleach solution and deposited on the standard AC carbon PEM grid. And they were first imaged using a scanning electron microscopy to elucidate the uh, expected structures. So these images were taken, um, uh, they're, they're an average of five by 30 second frames, normalized to the flat field, taken at a magnification of 800. And good contrast was observed from diatom spread over approximately a 30 micrometer uh, field of view with features down to 50 nanometers resolvable. 
For initial tomography, the diatom was imaged from 17 unique tilt angles in the interval from minus 40 to plus 40 degrees, so five micron steps. Each image was acquired with an exposure time of 150 um, seconds, uh, consisting of five by 30 second individual frames to make sure that sufficient signal was detected even through the most absorbing regions of the diatom. Prior to reconstruction, the images were coarsely aligned using features on the sample and reconstructions were performed using the IMOT software. So these are the very first uh, tomograms produced on our system and work is ongoing to optimize data collection strategies and image alignment uh, before moving to, to more complex um, samples. Moving now to the cryo cube. Um, into which the, the cryo samples are loaded. Uh, it consists of a uh, sample transfer load lock, uh, as well as a liquid nitrogen uh, dewer. Sample motion is closely controlled to within plus or minus one na uh, nanometer. The sample rotation um, is plus or minus 100 degrees for rotation. Samples are loaded vertically using a wobble stick, and the sample holder um, accepts three millimeter uh, standard DEM grids. It should also be noted that, that this cryo stage is also adaptable for other uh, types of holders such as uh, pillory sample holders. For cryo sample transfer we have built a home built, uh, we've built a, home, a, a box um, that can accept the wobble stick and sample holders. So here we should see the wobble stick is, is docked and the sample holder is placed horizontally for grid transfer. The leaf springs that hold the the TEM grid in the, in the recess are activated via two pins via manually operated lever. The box is filled with liquid nitrogen and covered with a Perspex lid, which maintains a sufficient nitrogen uh, vapor pressure to prevent ice formation on the sample during transfer. So within, in general, within the company, we have, we have developed uh, stable and artifact-free procedures for the preparation, handling, storage, and visual inspection of, of cryofix samples. So my colleague Bernie Skoka will uh, describe these developments in more detail in the following presentation. Briefly, uh, this is a, a speeded up video of the sample loading. A uh, sample is loaded vertically. Uh, here is the zone plate holder, which is fully retractable to allow sample loading. The sample is enclosed in a shroud uh, during transfer to prevent ice contamination. This is our first cryo image of a diatom sample. Um, it consists of 20 by 30 second individual frames to monitor for signs of drift. No discernible drift was detected. These are our very first cryo images, as I said, so this is very much ongoing work. So the next steps in microscope, uh, or the next steps in development will be the microscope uh, characterization uh, in terms of determining a, a robust, um, or continuing the microscope characterization and also determining a robust theoretical model to establish how close to the theoretical limit we are currently operating. We've just started cryo imaging and we will continue to test this function initially through the imaging of simple cells uh, such as yeast or bacteria that have been, have been prepared in-house before moving to more complex uh, mammalian cells. So as part of the ongoing microscope validation we welcome samples from external parties and we have all the cryo imaging capabilities in-house to facilitate these studies. Imaging samples from experienced soft x-ray microscopy users and comparing these images to images of the same samples obtained at synchrotron microscopes will provide the best validation of the, of the Series 6T microscope. In parallel to the above developments we are building a second microscope which will be used to launch the company's imaging service offering. This microscope will be placed in the Biomolecular Imaging Institute at University College Dublin by the middle of next year. We will build our first commercial product fully commissioned for CE certification by the middle of next year and we'll commission this at a customer site by the end of 2021. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge a number of, of people. Uh, firstly, the Synchrotron Imaging Community who continue to uh, support us in a variety of ways from microscope validation, sample preparation pro, uh, protocols, component supply, um, advice on potential applications, etc. This support is ongoing and it's, it's very much appreciated. I'd like to thank all of the spectroscopy group at the School of Physics at University College Dublin, uh, with whom we uh, 
maintaining strong links, as well as the technical workshop, of course, uh, within the school. I'd like to thank Demetri Schultz and all at the Conway Institute of Bio uh, Med Medical and Biomolecular Sciences at University College Dublin. Uh, all of our cryo sample transfer and, and, and sample preparation work has been carried out to date in Dimitri's lab. The, uh, also, the Irish government for funding and SME supports and the EU Horizon 2020 um, SME Instrument Award, which we recently received. And finally, all the staff at Series XT for their fantastic hard work and dedication. And one final note, uh, we have recently collaborated with a number of leading European virology research groups to seek funding to, to demonstrate the lab microscope and virology applications. Uh, we welcome further applications uh, or collaborations on new application development. So please get in touch if you have a project in mind. So that's about it for me. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the remainder of the symposium. Bye bye.